Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Rank Roulette series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today we're going to be continuing on with our Road to Rank series that we kicked off with earlier in the week. I haven't got the team up on the screen at the minute because it is Wednesday and we can activate those bonus buttons. So I'm going to actually activate a couple of bonus buttons today. We had some games yesterday. We had actually three games in our last episode. So if you want to check that out before coming into this one, then I'll put a card up there for you. you can check that out. Come back though and check out today's episode because like I say, we're about to activate two buttons because we had a really good start and things didn't go so well. So let's see if we can change things up a bit. There's two I'm going to activate. I'm going to activate our Legend Maker button and our Randomizer. Uh, so we're going to lose something randomly from the party and then we're going to throw in a brand new selection, something that you guys have nominated and then the next one is going to be the Legend Maker. It's going to be between Giratina and Dialga. And to be honest, if I had a choice right now, I would pick probably Dialga to go out and get something else in. Um, I'm really liking Giratina and I think it can do a lot of work. And uh, it's a shame that it's been so long and nearly all season that I've not used it. And it's up to now that we've used it. But hopefully, I feel like it's going to do a lot of work. Hopefully, we get something good like Kyogre would be amazing. Um, but obviously, the wheel dictates our fate. So, what we're going to do is activate that randomizer first. Let's see what Pokemon we're going to lose. I don't really want to lose any of these Pokemon. I'm sure you don't as well, but we're going to have to lose something. So let's hit that button and see which one we're going to lose today. Ah, oh, it's for Alligator. You know, the one thing that I've been like, I really want to get this working. We've seen glimpses of it in the last couple of days where it's nearly got the Dragon Dance up and done some work and it has done a little bit of work here and there but it's been kind of fodder when we've switched it in and taken a lot of damage and normally getting killed to allow us to kind of proceed for the rest of the match so that's unfortunate okay let's go back over to the wheel now let's see what Pokemon we're gonna have in place for for Alligator so wheel roulette please give us something good <laughs> Napoleon! It's incredible. Okay, we get a water type for a water type, but we get that steel type that we're so dearly missing with all these dragon and fairy weak Pokemon that we've got on our team. So that steel type's gonna be really nice. Also, a better switch into something like Kyogre if you face it. Got a little bit more of a weakness to ground on now, so that's not ideal, but I feel like it's a good enough trade and it's got potential speed control there so that's an excellent switch I am sad about for alligator but it's weird as well water type for water type starter for starter who would have thought anyway we need to activate our legend maker button now like I say I'm fingers crossed that we get Dialga out not Giratina so let's see where the wheel lands this week Okay, it is Dialga, and this is not a fix. I've got the <laughs> got the raw footage. I keep saying this. I keep saying this. There's a raw footage there. I can put it out if you guys want proof that this is what happens. This is how the wheel, the wheel online has dictated our fate. I've just put it into fancy, nice animation for us to see. But we need to see which Pokemon, which legend we're gonna get in place of our Dialga. So over to the roulette wheel. <laughs> It's Zygarde, ten percent form. Okay, that's cool. I'm really, I'm down with that. That's amazing. I like that choice. So we get rid of the forgot for alligator, get Empoleon in, and then get rid of the Dialga, get Zygarde in. So and it's Zygarde ten percent form as well. So it's a dog. I've never actually used it in this format. So this is quite exciting. Right, got our choices. Got our new selections. I'm not going to hit any more buttons here. We've still got our switch up, so we can use that. At any point this week and our patreon button as well so we've got two buttons left if we need to but we'll get straight into today's episode we'll get over to the team see the revamped 
changes that we've made as always the team is down in the description below there is a roll pace poke pace check out the details of the team there is some wacky sets on here just to match the team like we've been saying all week uh, the Zygarde 10% form it's got a base speed of 115 for those that you did, didn't know out there so I've went with the choice band set it's quite a common set in singles so I thought well why not try it in doubles let's see what it can do it can hit pretty hard especially with thousand arrows um, it does need a little bit of speed control in some some situations, but for the most part, I think it'll perform quite well. This is probably one of the most hyper offensive teams that I've played in a long, long time. It just it does feel very weird, but at the same time, I do really like it. So that's cool. We went with Steel Wing. We've got the Defiant Ability on Empoleon. We've got Icy Wind and then Liquidation there to help support the rest of the team. We've got that additional speed control that we already talked about, and the rest of the team's pretty much the same. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Let's get some confidence behind us. Let's get some wins today. I feel good about it. I feel good about the changes. I feel like we can do some work. Rating, we're not gonna talk about, but it's not about the rating. We'll talk about the rating when we get to that mark, and you know the mark that we're talking about, um, but we've got a first opponent, so Tartaros. 1447 so he's got some tasty juicy points that we can try and obtain off him so let's get over to team preview and see this glorious team that he's running for us to face in this first game today okay so Todoros is running a team of Kyoga, Rayquaza, Celesteela, Incineroar, Gengar and Cortana so we potentially got double Mega on this team between the Gengar and the Rayquaza um, classic Ray a Rayoga kind of concept. You've got the Celesteela that was made famous by our good friend Wolf Glick at the recent North American International Championship showing off how good that Pokemon can be with support options like Wide Guard and just that Steel typing in general and the obviously ground immunity there. The Incineroar there with the Intimidate support and I actually really like the Cartana inclusion here. I, I do think Cartana's got a really big role to play in the Ultra Series still this season. So nice to see it featuring here, but what are we gonna do against this team? Because I feel like um, Empoleon can play a huge role in this game. Uh, we do have to watch out for Earth Power from the Rayquaza, but we do have the Shuka Berry on there to help out a little bit in that respect. I think Tapu Koko as well can be actually really strong in this, this matchup. So I'm gonna bring Empoleon. Um, do we bring, hmm, hmm, Tapu Koko? Or Giratina, maybe. Um, hmm. Now, we definitely need Tapu Koko. I think Giratina for sure. And I'm going to round things off with Zygarde. So, we're bringing all, all the new boys and girls this week. So, that's good. We're going to feature our brand new Pokemon in our very first match today. Hopefully, it goes smoothly. And we can pick up a win. But um, we'll just have to wait and see. See, it's not going to be an easy match. Um like I keep saying, this roulette series, we're picking a, a real tough time to uh, get this going when everyone seems to have really solid, solid teams at the end of a season. They're playing it all year. We're coming in just with these wacky teams, but it is fun. Nonetheless, I will say that for sure. Right, we're going to see Kyogre and Gengar come up for my opponent. Everything seems to be at a stand. <sighs> stand still. Come on. That's not cool. Ah. Uh, Okay, we had a disconnect from my opponent. I'm a bit sad about that. I can't really class that as a win either, I don't feel, because it's too good it was too good a team to say we we were taking that as a, a victory. Too good a team. Uh, I feel bad for my opponent that they've had a disconnect and they're gonna lose some points. That's a bit sad and really sad that we couldn't actually finish the battle there. So you know, hopefully we bump it into Tataros at some point again in the future and we can have a replay but that would be quite good um let's uh we're not going to bother changing screen because it's just going to disrupt things hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent though um yeah so we'll be streaming this thursday 8 p.m so do come over to twitch just to remind you guys about that um and also the poll for the nominations for next week's roulette series is now up on the community section of the channel so if you'd like to nominate a pokemon do go over there and add that certain pokemon to the to the um to the discussion and uh, i will make sure to add it into the roulette wheel for next week's draw and hopefully your selection does come out 
Um, but yes, like I was saying, uh, we will be streaming. We streamed last Thursday. Uh, we did some Temtem, which was a lot of fun. So we'll probably do a little bit more of that this week. Um, maybe we might do some Pokemon. Play some serious Pokemon, maybe. But I think like we'll play a little bit more Temtem. It is very fun. It's very much like Pokemon, but slightly different. And I think it's going to be a really, really cool game when it does release. It's a bit different to Pokemon. Um, in a lot of ways, but it is very similar in others. If you've missed last week's stream, you can catch up with it actually on the channel. It is here. I'll try and remember to put a card there. So for those of you that want to see it, you can check it out. Um, yeah, so it doesn't look like we can find an opponent. The battle spot is, is desolate this evening. I'm so hot tonight as well. I had a it's a long day, a long day at work today. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I started a new job recently. And now I cycle to work, um, where I used to have this lovely 20 minute walk to work and back every day. It was uh, it was glorious, except in the winter when it was when it was snowing or in the winter uh, when it was raining. It wasn't that great, but um, yes, now I cycle like seven points, seven point two miles there and then another 7.2 back every day so it's keeping me fit and I start very early so I'm like up at like half five in the morning now and I do like a 10 hour day but it does mean that I can have a Tuesday off now which is quite good so it means I can at least catch up with content see to Thea um, have a day with her and, and Tash and stuff like that so that's quite nice um, but it is it's been brutal getting used to it from like doing just regular seven and a half hour days and then go on to like these 10 hour days and cycling there and cycling back and then a new baby as well at the same time it's been madness like trying to adjust to that but finding a way everything seems to be working out all right so i'm just hot tonight i was just saying like it's so warm at the minute i'm just like oh, dying and i'm actually working out when i get home as well on top of everything so um Fitting it all in, fitting it all in. But I am, yeah, if I seem a bit clammy, that is why. And I do apologize. <laughs> but this is why I've got the hat on, because my hair's like, poof. It's just done it. But I should be getting a haircut. Maybe tomorrow. If I've got time, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It looks like it's going to take a little bit longer to find our first opponent. So what I'm going to do is just cut it here. And we'll come back when we bump into our first opponent, my friends. And we got our first opponent of the episode. We got Selena from Germany on a 1637 rating. So this is a big rated player for us, what we're normally used to. So let's hop over to team preview. It's pretty similar team to what we just faced. So this is this is quite good. It's a premonition. Okay, so we've got Selena with a team of Cortana, Tapacoco, Mimikyu, Rayquaza, Incineroar, and Kyogre. So we've got the Ray Ogre combination again paired up with that Tapacoco, Cortana, and Incineroar. But this time instead of the Gengar, you've got the Mimikyu there, which can be a trick room setter as well. So something we need to watch out for, for sure. Um, uh, again, I do feel like... Uh, Empoleon could do some work here. Um, definitely Tapacoco can do some work. Um, do we lead off with Infernip or in this match? Because Infernip's still decent against Cartana, to be honest. Um, the fake out pressure is really nice, just in general. Um, it's the Trick Room that I'm a little bit scared of. That's the that's the only thing. Um, but we do have Taunt on Infernip that we can utilize to get around that a little bit. Uh, I think we probably need Empoleon. And do we want to bring Giratina here? Hmm. Or Zygarde. <sighs> Giratina or Zygarde. Hmm. I'm going to bring Zygarde. I'm going to go with what we went with last game. And let's lock in. So, I don't think this one's going to be as easy as maybe our last game was going to be. I'm not saying our last game would have been easy, but, you know, the ratings... The ratings speak for themselves. Um, and our rating definitely speaks for itself, I'm sure. Right, we're going to see Cortana Kyogre come up for my opponent. Um, obviously, the, the Infernip has a way more difficult time here. Uh, but the Coco can put a lot of pressure onto this Kyogre straight away from the off the bat. Where we can fake out the Cortana, we can kind of check the, the Kyogre. Uh, we've got the Wild Charge as well, which is very nice. Um, I think one thing we have to watch out for maybe is the Cortana switching out into Incineroar. So the Kyogre has got potentially um, 
uh, free turn the, the following turn, but I mean we should still be alright. Do I go for the Z move? I, the thing is I don't really feel like I want to go for the Z move into the Kyogre because I feel like the Kyogre probably protects you over anything else. This is where Faint would be incredible on Iron Fainip. We'll just go for a fake out into the Cortana and uh, we'll go for a wild charge into that Kyogre slot which is now the Tapu Koko. The Cortana are going to detect here. So it does mean that our Infernip has a pretty um, free turn here. Sash is still intact which is nice. Um, and I wonder is the Cortana sashed? I would, let's have a look. I would say in this team composition uh, it's, it's it's probably sashed. It is probably sashed. I would imagine. Um, so, what could we do? Could we bring in the Zygarde here, maybe, and go for a close combat into the Cortana? Yeah, let's do that. Cause I'm I'm kind of mindful that the typical would go for a Volt Switch here, and uh, the the Kyogre come in. So we don't want to go for a Flare Blitz. I think that's probably one thing we don't want to do. Oh, it's going to be the Tonkot Tackle. It's going to be into our Tapu Koko slot. It's going to be into Zygarde, so we're going to lose Zygarde here for sure. <sighs> Which is a bit of a shame. Um, but I mean, they're using their Z move, so I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. If it's into Inferno, that's... It is. Okay, so it takes us down to our Sash. Um, what's a Cartana going to do? It probably doubles into the Inferno, I imagine. Uh, oh, but we do outspeed it, so we will get a close combat off the four anything else which is amazing do take it down to a sash so it's all right and now the, the coco can't really kill our zygarde because they've used their z move um, in the tailwind huh that's interesting mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. that means infernip does get to stick around for a little bit longer now could extreme speed the cartana and switch into I mean, we've got to try and play around things a little bit better than what we have. I mean, typical coming in probably isn't a bad switch for Inferno because then we do get, uh, we still survive. Like, we're not going to go down. And I don't want to bring in Polyon in just yet because it's such a good switch into that Kyogre. Uh, Zygarde should take a Dazzling Gleam from the Coco. And it means that we get Inferno for that. Uh, fake out later on in the game. Yeah, so we do take that from Zygarde. That's, that's good. And maybe the Coco. I wonder if we can get the Coco with um, extreme speed. I wonder. I do wonder. Hmm. Right, Kyogre going to hit the field now. Um, hmm. Can we get Coco with an extreme speed? Or do we keep... Do we keep Zygarde for later on? Um, hmm. I'm going to try the extreme speed into Coco. And I'm just going to... I'm going to actually switch Coco out to... No, I'm not. I'm going to protect Coco this turn. We'll just protect. Protect. Protect our Coco. It doesn't look like my opponent's going to protect at all. So we will get the extreme speed. Come on, choice band extreme speed. Let's get this type of Coco. Oh, it's so close! It's so close. We're going to lose our guard, but that's fine. We'll get um, Infernape in. Uh, which is fine. There's a water spout. And a fake out will get the Coco, but we can't really afford to fake out the Coco, can we? Because we've got to really fake out the Kyogre. Um, the problem is here I feel is if we leave the Coco in now the, the Rayquaza probably can pick up the knockout if we take another Dazzling Gleam it will surely pick up the knockout onto um, I'm going to fake out Coco okay and I'm going to bring in Empoleon because we'll take a water spout I just don't want Coco taking Dazzling Gleam damage because I feel like that will put us in range 4 an extreme speed from the Rayquaza and we need Coco to be at least out of range from that and I think we're probably just out of range now as long as it's not um, 
Mm, he went for the wrong target, but never mind. We will lose it, Bennett. Napoleon still takes a chunk of damage from that, doesn't it? But I guess the Tailwind pit is out now, so that's alright. Um, we do get Coco in. Um, we can put pressure on that Kyogre for sure. Uh, right, I don't think the Kyogre attacks here at all. And I can definitely Icy Wind. Um, which I'm definitely going to do. So the Rayquaza are going to Mega Evolve. It's got to... I feel like you go for the Extreme Speed into Coco. And the Kyogre Protect. That's what I would, I, that's what I would think you would do, but who knows, who knows. Kyogre protects, maybe the earth power into the Coco if it's uh, a soul vest. Goes into the Coco, so Empoleon gets a free turn, so we get the icy wind off into the Rayquaza, which is the big thing here. So that's pretty, pretty huge for us. Um, yeah, the... Delta Stream is proving very difficult for us to deal with. Now, could we go for the Gigavolt Havoc? We could go for the Z Wild Charge for sure into the Empoleon and then go for another Icy Wind. But we will lose Coco at that point. So I think. Hmm. I just don't think we can get the Rayquaza from this range, especially if it's a Salt Vest. Uh, we could go for the Z Wild Charge, maybe. That will get it. And then go for another Icy Wind in case the Coco comes in for that Kyogre. Oh, we're not going to see the Kyogre switch out. It's going to stay in. It's probably going to be able to pick up the Coco now. I think at this position, we're kind of locked. I'd like to be able to say we'll take out the Rayquaza. Uh, if the Kyogre goes for Origin Pulse, there's a chance it could miss, but I think with the Coco coming in and we've got Empoleon just left, it's not really going to be enough to finish this one off, is it? But let's see. Can this take down the Rayquaza? Oh, it's so close. So close. It's into Coco. Okay. Uh, that will definitely... Yeah, that does the job, doesn't it? Uh, and then uh, Origin Pulse, yeah, it does go for it. I do miss. It doesn't really matter though now, you know, we'll probably take the Rayquaza down, we'll chip this Kyogre. Um, but the problem, oh wow, we don't even take the, the Ray down. Wow. So weak. Um, okay, so. I mean, Empoleon is the last Pokemon standing. But we're against, against three Pokemon. It just kind of goes to show, like, Zygod. As good as it is at times, it's just not doing enough. Like, you need that extreme speed, um, really, to be picking up the knockout onto onto the Coco from the range that it was. Uh, when you choice band as well, I think that's a big thing. And not being able to do that it does hurt. It really does affect the outcome. Because then if you get the Coco, then it takes away... Uh, everything that can do, um, but the water spout still doing so much to Empoleon. That's crazy, you know. Like resisted, uh, but never mind. Never mind. Good game to Selena. Um, I think we've played before as well, so very nice playing again, and uh, very nice team as well. Composition. So I feel like our hand was kind of forced with Zygarde. I think the one thing that comes into question for ourselves is. Uh, would Feint be useful on Infernip? And I definitely think it would be. And maybe in that match, Giratina probably would have been a better shout than than Zygod. But that's hindsight for you, isn't it? So it's quite easy to kind of identify that after the match. Um, but you've got to really do it when you're going into the match. That's the way to do it anyway. Um, let's go for Ultra Recon Squad. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. Um, and hopefully we can bring Gallade. We've not really brought much of Mega Gallade. Let's hop over to our, our screen. And we can have a look at our, rate, our dismal rating. Um, 
but yeah, it seems like the battle spot is a bit sparse this evening. So what I'm going to do, just to speed things up, is just cut this right now and we'll come back when we find that next opponent. And we've got our next opponent as I'm in the middle of just balancing things on my face. But we've got Ash. Ash. The man himself as our next opponent. So we'll get straight into this next one. <laughs> So we've got our next opponent playing a very cool uh, restricted combination between Rayquaza and Groudon. Then the support and cast of Crawback going to be the Tailwind Speed Control Setter of the team. Helps shut down things like uh, Xerneas that do threaten this team otherwise. Tapu Koko there with its train control. Then Ferrothorn I guess going to be some sort of... Um, Trick Room check and something that is also nice to deal with uh, Kyogre that can cause this team otherwise a few issues and then the Incineral there, uh, standard just Intimidate, Fake Out support. So how are we going to deal with this team? Again I feel like Empoleon could do some work potentially, um, oh, let's see, Tailwind probably is going to be very good here. Um, so we'll go Giratina, I think. I think we'll bring Giratina here because it's always good against Groudon. We need to watch out and be a little bit careful around that Tapu Koko for sure. Um, uh, do we bring Infernip? Uh, yeah, we'll bring Infernip. Yeah, I do like the idea of Infernip. I like the idea of Zygarde in this match. And I think, hmm, who's that last one going to be? Is it going to be Tapu Koko? Or is it going to be Gilead? Mega Gilead could be good here. Uh, but Tapu Koko is probably the one, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And good job we clicked on Tapu Koko when we did, because I was not paying attention to the timer at all, and my head was probably like this the whole time, so I'm so sorry. I should have been I should have been looking at it like this and be like, yeah, we've got the Tapu Koko here, and with it's, yeah, it's all good, and we could pick this one. Instead, I'm like, blinkers on. So... Apologies. <laughs> Keep that in mind for future videos. I should know by now, shouldn't I? I've done it so many times. I'm going to see the Crobat and the Groudon come out for um, my opponent. Um, I wonder if they try and taunt Giratina to stop our Tailwind. Or if they just Tailwind themselves. I'm going to go for a Tailwind fake out. I think we've got to go at least try and match uh, their Tailwind. Um, and I like the sun being up because our flare blitz can do a heck of a lot of damage. Uh, so we'll go for the tailwind, we'll go for a fake out into the Groudon. And uh, oh, it just protects there, so it kind of indicate that it might be going for the tailwind setup here. Yeah. There's the fake out. And oh, a taunt. Cheeky little taunt shutting down our tailwind. Hmm. Okay. I don't mind that too much, to be honest. Um, now they'll go for the Tailwind, but we'll go for an Earth Power into Groudon, and um, do we go for Flare Blitz into the Crobat, or do we preserve Infernip for later? We don't really have a great switch in, so I'd kind of prefer... Uh, we could also just close combat the Groudon, preserve our Sash, so instead of losing it mindlessly, like we're probably going to be doing, it gives us an extra turn once our tailwind's set up. So we'll go for the tail, the, the close combat, because then we're, with this flare blitzing, it will break our own sash. So it does kind of hinder the ability of us to be able to do that. So uh, close combat doing some nice damage, though. Huge damage, actually. I didn't expect it to do as much. Infernip's great. There's the other part. It's going to be into Infernip, like I say. It does preserve our sash. So it gives us an extra turn to get around this tailwind. Uh, Giratina getting away scot free here. Obviously, immune to those super fangs from the Crobat as well, as we get a nice, tasty Earth Power into the ground on and pick up that clean one hit, tasty kill. Uh, Giratina is just such a good Pokemon. <laughs> it's so good. I can't, I can't say this enough. Okay. Um, and now I know we give my opponent a free switch in once they've got the tailwind set up, but at the same time we get rid of ground on and I think 9 times out of 10 you would take that wouldn't you? Tough call, we're going to hit the field now. Could we get um, Zygarde in? Mm, probably not. Uh, I think we'll protect Giratina though. Well we could, we could just go, for, well we can't protect, we've got to go for an earth power into Coco. Um, the problem is, I think, that we will probably... Do we see a Twinkle Tackle? That's the problem, I think. I think that's the problem, the, the Twinkle Tackle. 
Let's see what Ash has got to throw out. We'll flare blitz into the Coco and see if we can get some damage off there. I don't know what the Crawbat is going to do. Um, if it stays in, it might switch out. There we go. Ash withdrawing his Crawbat. Requires that going to hit the field. If we can get this flare, but like uh, Earth Power, into the Coco, this will be pretty good because we should. Ah, it's going to be the Twinkle Tackle. Can Giratina take this though? Giratina's pretty bulky, but I don't think that bulky. Although it is really bulky. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we could take this, to be honest. Because this is not one of the most powerful fairy type attacks. We are weak to it, of course, but Giratina's a beast, remember. We take it! The beast is alive! There's a Flare Blitz! Infernip, self-sacrifice is going to go down. Oh, of course, Blaze is in effect. I forgot. <laughs> so we get the blaze boost. That's why I'm like, how did that do so much damage? That's ridiculous. Uh, we do waste an attack there with Earth Power, but I mean, it's fine, isn't it? Um, so we've got Rayquaza left. We've got Crobat. We've got one turn of Tailwind. We'll bring Coco in. Giratina's running the show, though. It is showboating a little bit. We've got the Giratina. Uh, the Rayquaza to deal with, of course. So that's going to be... That's going to be difficult, regardless, whatever we do. Um, do we just protect Giratina here? Protect it. Do we just double protect? I mean, it's probably better just double protecting, just to scout out what my opponent's going to do. Um, Rayquaza are obviously going to Mega Evolve. I guess the worst thing would be here if it did go for um, a Sword Stance. You never really see too much these days, and now I've said it, touch wood, it doesn't. Because it does have given it a perfectly good opportunity to do this. And props to my opponent if they do it, because they're picking up on a potential double protect. Super Fang into Coco, and... Earth Power. Okay. That's fine. Um, right, I think we've got a Tailwind. We've got to try and Tailwind. And... Do we go for the... Yeah, I think we go for the Wild Charge. Into the Crobat. Gigavolt Havoc. Oh, we don't get it. Ah, that's weird. They're, um... Huh. The Tailwind failed. Is that Tailwind not ran out yet? They got one turn left. Have we miscalculated? Have they as well? Oh yeah, of course they have. They've got one turn left because he taunted the... The Giratina first, it's Life Orb Rayquaza, which is interesting. Um, and now, if this takes down the Crawbat, that would be incredible. I don't know if it will, because it's obviously weakened by the... The Mysterious Strong Winds. But we'll get the Gigavolt Havoc. So let's see what damage we can do. This is going to be pretty powerful. It's going to be strong. Strong Coco. Let's do this. Come on. Easy. Easy. I mean, all day long. Wow. Okay. That's excellent. Tailwind does pitter out there, so both myself and my opponent misjudged that. And can, can we, can we get the, uh, the Outrage gone with the Zygarde? Come on. I've, like, I haven't used Outrage since, like, 2012? 12? No. I don't even know when the last time I used Outrage. It's a long time ago, but we're going to use it. Um, and I'm just going to go for a Dazzle as well. I don't think the Dazzle will pick up the knockout, but um, the Outrage definitely will. Huh. Wow. Okay. I guess the Dragon Ascent, of course. So, we pick up a victory. That takes us to three wins and four losses at the end of today. So, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. We've got two buttons left as well, guys. So, it's been, it's been a bit of a longer one today. You've had a little bit of a life story along the way, but I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I really appreciate you coming and viewing and hopefully you find it entertaining. Tomorrow, we might activate one more button. So, if you do and would like to see me activate, maybe we've got the randomizer, we've got the Patreon button. I think the randomizer might be quite fun to activate tomorrow. So, um, no, it's not the randomizer. We use that today. Today we got the switch up, the switch up, so that could be quite that could be quite good to use tomorrow. So um, we'll do that if you would like to. Um, but I'm gonna end it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. Remember to go over to our community section. There is a post at the minute asking you for nominations for next week. 
do go over there and vote for something to get thrown into the roulette wheel to hopefully get featured for next week's episode. And remember, if I don't catch tomorrow's episode, we are streaming over on Twitch tomorrow evening, which is Thursday, 8 p.m. UK time, Greenwich Mean Time plus one, because it's British summer time here at the minute. Um, and uh, we'll be playing some Temtem, and it will be great to see you catch up, chat, and just play some Temtem and hopefully show you some something cool about the game. So have a great rest of your day, whatever you're up to. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.